Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in again to our next presentation from Faisal Mahmood. Faisal is the CEO and co-founder of Faceshift and today he will tell us about the development of refractory, refractory high entropy, entropy alloys using machine learning and density functional theory simulations. Faisal, with that, over to you. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Uh, good morning to everyone in the audience from Toronto. My name is Fazal and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Faceshift. Uh, today, I'm excited to present our work on the development of refractory high entropy alloys using machine learning and density functional theory simulations. As part of my presentation, I will first provide an introduction on all the relevant concepts, high entropy alloys, uh, high entropy alloys for structural applications, the challenges associated with coming up with new HEAs, the solution uh, phase shifts materials acceleration platform, what is density functional theory, machine learning, and then finally, I will discuss the results and potential for future work. So high entropy alloys. High entropy alloys are a relatively new class of alloys that can have four or more principal elements in equimolar or non-equimolar, near equimolar ratios. For this reason, they're also known as multi-principal element alloys or complex concentrated alloys. Now, different academics have some variation of the definition that they attach to high entropy alloys, but these two are the most sort of generally agreed upon. So HEAs are alloys that contain four or more principal elements in equimolar or near equimolar ratios. And then the other definition is entropic definition. So as the name suggests, HEAs are alloys that have a high entropy of mixing, usually large in, larger than 1.5 R. So since the development of first high entropy alloys, like the Cantor alloy that is shown on the upper right corner, there has been significant work that has been done in the development in the field of high entropy alloys. There's been different generations of HEAs that have been developed. And if we compare them to the traditional alloys, traditional alloys usually have one to two principal elements. And the motivation behind developing an alloy is to produce a material that is tougher or better than the pure metal itself. So we have our nickel alloys or steel or copper aluminum alloys. Then we have first gen high entropy alloys that usually contain five or more principal elements in equimolar ratios. And the microstructure is relatively single, a simple single phase uh, structure. And some of the alloys are, you know, the Cantor alloys I mentioned and aluminum, cobalt, chromium, iron, nickel alloys as well. But then we've also seen a second generation of high entropy alloys. Here, we don't have five principal elements anymore. We can have four or more principal elements, but here we have non-equimolar compositions. So when we have non-equimolar compositions, we could also have complex microstructures. So this could mean dual phase or triple phase. And some of those include the refractory high entropy alloys that we are interested in exploring further. A visual representation of it is on the left side where you can have a ternary map and uh, traditional alloys usually lie on the corners of these ternary compositional maps. Equimolars are right at the center. And as you uh, deviate away from the central part, you find non-equimolar HEAs as well. So HEAs for structural applications. So HEAs are being explored for a variety of applications because of the structural or functional properties. But we're interested in refractory high entropy alloys for one particular property, their high temperature stability and strength. And they can retain this high temperature strength beyond the operating temperatures of nickel superalloys, which are sort of the traditional uh, status quo for high temperature materials in aerospace industry. So when we when we see uh, turbine engines, the turbine blades are made out of nickel superalloys, and we want to find materials that can operate at high temperatures. So if you're in the field of material science, you have probably seen some variation of this Ashby chart on the right. And from that, we can see that high entropy alloys are have a good or excellent even a uh, combination of strength and toughness better than some of most of the alloys that are uh, presently available. So they offer a very exciting opportunity to explore in terms of structural materials. And because we have so many principal elements, um, they can be the composition of the alloy can be altered significantly to produce properties that are tailored to a specific use case. So they present an opportunity to develop materials that are use case specific. Now, looking at some of the class of high entropy alloys, uh, we, we see there's three main categories, uh, 3D transition high entropy alloys, transition plus aluminum, and then refractory super alloys. And as we see, the refractory super alloys have the most uh, amount of strength and they retain that strength at high temperature. So those are the alloys that we're interested in. Now, talking about the challenges